Chapter 11, Learning Objective 2, Prepare a Statement of Cash Flows. Here is an example of a cash flow statement prepared using the indirect method format. Note that there are four sections in the statement. First is the operating activities section, that starts with net income followed by various adjustments to reconcile net income to cash provided by operating activities. In this example, the net cash inflow from operating activities is $70,000. This means the company was able to generate cash of $70,000 from its normal operating activities. The second section is the investing activities section that identifies cash from the proceeds from the sale of property, plant, and equipment and long-term assets along with cash flows to purchase those items. Here, the net cash outflow from investing activities is $1,040,000. This means that the company used a lot of cash to purchase building and machinery. The third section is financing activities, which shows cash flows to pay dividends, pay down debt, repurchase shares, etc., along with cash generated from taking out bank loans, issuing shares, etc. Here we see the company raised a net of $847,000 from financing activities, mostly to help pay for the purchases made in the investing section. When the operating, investing, and financing section net cash flows are added together, we see that there is a net decrease in cash for the period of $123,000. This means the company used up that amount of cash in the period. When added to the $150,000 beginning of year cash balance, we end up with the ending cash balance for the year of $27,000. There are seven steps involved in the preparation of the statement of cash flows. Step 1 begins with setting up a cash flow table or work with the existing income statement and balance sheet. Step 2 is to calculate the net change in cash by comparing the current year and previous year ending cash balances. In this example, we know the cash has decreased by $123,000 from 2022 to 2023. Step 3 requires us to analyze and calculate the changes in retained earnings, R E, and dividends payable. In this example, the beginning balance in retained earnings was a credit balance of $650,000 and the ending balance is a credit $672,000. That's a change of $22,000, but that's not the information we're looking for. Remember that net income is added to retained earnings. In this example, during 2023, net income of $80,000 was earned, so that would be added to the opening balance of $650,000 in retained earnings resulting in a sum of $730,000. But that's not the same as the ending balance reported of $672,000. There's a difference of $58,000, which can only be explained by dividends that were declared by the company. We can prove this by reconciling the retained earnings account with the following formula. Opening retained earnings plus net income minus dividends declared equals closing retained earnings. $650,000 opening plus $80,000 net income minus $58,000 declared equals $672,000 ending. Now pay attention here because what I'm about to say next is important. Dividends declared is not the same as dividends paid. This is because dividends can be declared but may not be fully paid in the same period. That's why we need to look at the dividend payable account, if there is one. If there is no dividend payable account on the balance sheet in a problem, then we can safely assume that the dividends declared are the same as the cash paid for dividends. But in this case, there is a dividend payable account with a beginning credit balance of $30,000 and an ending credit balance of $25,000. We know from Chapter 10 that the journal entry to record a dividend is to debit dividends declared, or retained earnings, and to credit dividends payable. This means that the $58,000 dividends declared would be added to the beginning dividend payable account of $30,000, and, if added together, we would have a balance of $88,000. But the ending balance should be only $25,000. Why is there a difference? That difference of $63,000 is a debit and must be the amount of cash actually paid for dividends. We can prove this using the formula opening dividends payable plus dividends declared less cash dividends paid equals closing dividends payable. 
$30,000 opening plus $58,000 declared minus $63,000 paid equals $25,000 ending. Our numbers are proven. Step 4 involves preparing the operating activities section, which, for this course, will be prepared using the indirect method. This section reports on cash flows of the principal business operations and begins with net income or loss from the income statement. Adjustments are made to restate net income or loss from an accrual basis to a cash basis by adding or subtracting non-cash items. Examples of non-cash items included in net income include depreciation, which is added back, gains, which are deducted, and losses, which are added back to income. We then adjust for any increases or decreases in each non-cash working capital accounts, i.e., current assets and current liabilities. We exclude current portion of long-term debt and dividends payable, which are incorporated into the financing activities section. Once all the adjustments are made, the operating activities section is subtotaled and reported. Let's now illustrate the preparation of the operating activities section for example corporation starting with the net income of $80,000 taken from the income statement. The adjustments that come next can be done in any order you like. Some like to work with the income statement first and then move on to the current assets and liabilities from the balance sheet, while others prefer to focus on the balance sheet first, then the income statement. Since we have our income statement in front of us, let's finish using it and identify the non-cash items that we must adjust on the statement of cash flows. Here we have depreciation expense of $260,000, which is added back to the net income. We add depreciation back because there is no cash transaction for depreciation. You can't write a check or pay someone for depreciation. It is simply a method of spreading the cost of capital expenditures over their useful lives. The other item we have here is the loss on disposal of machinery, $10,000. Again, a loss is not a transaction that can be settled in cash. It's simply the difference between the proceeds on the sale of the machinery and the carrying value on the balance sheet. Thus, the loss must be added back when we are looking to come up with a cash-based income. Now we are finished with the income statement and can now proceed to looking at changes in working capital items on the balance sheet. The easiest way to do this is to simply start with the first current asset after cash and look at the differences between the two years. Here we can see that accounts receivable went from $450,000 in 2022 to $375,000 in 2023. This is a decrease of $75,000 in accounts receivable and is good for cash because the company is collecting its accounts and is releasing cash tied up in AR. This difference is added to our operating section. Next on to merchandise inventory which went from $450,000 to $900,000. This is an increase of $450,000 and must be subtracted on our cash flow statement because it is a use of cash to purchase inventory in advance of selling it. Then our last current asset is prepaid expenses which went from $10,000 in 2022 to $20,000 in 2023. This is also subtracted on the cash flows statement because this is a use of cash to prepay expenses. Now we're done with the current assets and then move on to current liabilities starting with accounts payable which increased from $145,000 to $235,000. This is an increase of $90,000 and is added to our cash flow statement. Students mix this one up a lot. Cash is added to the cash flow statement because the company is delaying paying suppliers. The next current liability is dividends payable, but we don't include that item in the operating activities section because it relates to financing. The last current liability is income taxes payable which went from $25,000 to $40,000. This is an increase of $15,000 and is added to the cash flow statement for the same reason the increase in accounts payable the company is delaying paying its taxes and isn't using cash yet. This is a good opportunity to identify a couple of rules for you to remember. Increases in current assets are always subtracted in the cash flow statement. This is because cash is being used to increase those assets. Decreases in current assets are always added to the cash flow statement. This is because cash is being released. 
On the liability side, increases in current liabilities are always added to the cash flow statement because the payment of those liabilities is being delayed. Decreases in current liabilities are always subtracted in the cash flow statement and that's because now the liabilities are being paid. It will probably take you a little time and practice to get the hang of this. So now we can finalize the operating section. After starting with net income of $80,000 and making our adjustments, we have determined that the net cash inflow from operating activities for example corporation was $70,000. This is the equivalent to the company's cash-based income. Feel free to pause the video here to make sure you get a good sense of what is going on with the operating section. Now let's move on to step 5 for the investing activities section. The investing activities section reports on cash flows regarding long-term assets. Proper preparation requires analysis of each long-term asset account to determine reasons for changes. This means we cannot just look at the change from one year to the next because we could be missing important information. Therefore, each increase and or decrease in each long-term asset account is identified and reported separately based on a thorough reconciliation of each account. The investing activities section is subtotaled and reported. Let's try the investing activities section by focusing on the machinery. Here is the PPE section of the balance sheet showing land, with no change, buildings with a change of $720,000 and machinery with a change of $210,000. We need to look at other information such as notes to the financial statements or other directives to help us out with this section. Notes 2 and 3 would provide information that machinery of $350,000 was purchased and machinery, with an original cost of $140,000 was sold $30,000 cash. If there was no information provided to tell us about at least the sale, then we could assume that the change in the balance from the beginning of the year to the end of the year was due to a purchase. My point here is that the difference in the machinery account of $210,000 is misleading and we need to dig deeper to know more. The best and easiest way is to use a T-account to reconstruct the asset account. We know that the opening balance for machinery was $920,000 and the ending balance was $1,130,000. We also know from the additional information that the original cost of machinery sold was $140,000 so that would be entered on the right side of the T-account to remove the asset. Note that this is not the same as the cash proceeds, which were $30,000. A common mistake is for students to credit the T-account for the asset for the proceeds, not for the original cost. You should make a note of this common error. Now when we take 920,000 less 140,000 that doesn't equal 1,130,000 does it? We're missing $350,000 on the debit side which must be the cost of the new asset acquired. So in the investing activities section, we must show both the sale and purchase transactions separately to inform our users of exactly what happened during the year. Thus, we see the proceeds from the sale of machinery for $30,000 as an inflow and then the purchase of machinery of $350,000 as an outflow. There is no additional information provided about any sales related to the building account, so we can safely assume that the difference of $720,000 here is all related to the purchase of a building. The total net cash outflows from investing activities, then, is $1,040,000. Now we can move on to step 6. The Financing Activities Section. This section reports on cash flows regarding long-term liabilities, share capital, and cash dividends, paid. This section also requires analysis of each long-term liability account and the share capital account to determine reasons for any changes, just like we did for the investing section. Each increase and or decrease in each account is identified and reported separately, and then the financing activities section is subtotaled and reported. Remember that dividends payable account that was in the current liabilities section and that we analyzed as part of step 2? Well, here it is again. Dividends are included in the financing section because dividends are a return to shareholders who have invested money into the company through the purchase of shares. We show the payment of dividends as a cash outflow of $63,000 on the cash flow statement. Then we have a long-term loan payable, which is essentially a bank loan. 
Since there is no additional information about additional amounts paid, we can assume that the increase of $500,000 from 2022 to 2023 is all related to borrowing more money and is reported as proceeds from bank loan of $500,000 on the cash flow statement. Next we look at the common shares account which increased from $800,000 to $1,210,000, or by $410,000. We would look for some information to determine if there were any share repurchases, and there is none for this example, so we can assume that the entire increase is the result of issuing more shares to raise more money. This is reported as an issuance of shares of $410,000 on the cash flow statement. We don't need to consider retained earnings anymore as part of this section because we only needed to determine if there were any dividends declared, which leads us to determine how much was paid in dividends. Thus, the net cash inflow from financing activities is $847,000. Now on to step 7. The reconciliation of cash balances. This step is necessary to identify and report the net increase or decrease in cash for the period to which we add the opening balance for cash and calculate the ending balance. The calculated ending cash balance on the cash flow statement should be equal to the ending cash balance in the balance sheet. If it doesn't then errors were made in one of the previous steps. Now here is our completed statement of cash flows for example corporation for the year ended December 31, 2023, expressed in thousands. We add the subtotals of all the sections. $70,000 net inflow from operating activities minus $1,040,000 used for investing activities plus $847,000 generated from financing activities for a net decrease in cash for the year of $123,000. We then add the $150,000 beginning cash balance to arrive at the ending cash balance of $27,000, which agrees to the cash reported on the balance sheet. Note the items with the red stars. These represent high dollar value items that should warrant further investigation, 